happening. All right, we're gonna get started on page 240. So just to review, um, we've talked about functional groups. So they're basically same thing as hydrocarbons, except they're not just made up of carbon and hydrogen. Now there's different things between them. And like we've gone over halides and alcohols and ethers and aldehydes and ketones last week. We went over the first one, two, three, four, five last week. And you don't have to memorize this, you just have to know how to use this table to help you identify things and name them. And they show you how to name them. And we have notes on naming them. So we've gone over halides, alcohols, the different types of alcohols, ethers, aldehydes, and ketones. We're gonna start with organic. We're gonna start off with organic acids, which is where we left off last week, page 240. So Olivia, I know you're just coming in, we're just picking up where we left off, 240, with organic acids. So looking at the reference table, I should have put them right now. They have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and also attached to an oxygen and a hydrogen. So this is different from an alcohol because alcohol just has the OH. Organic acid has an OH and a double bond to an alcohol. Aldehydes just have the double bond to, they're similar to aldehydes. Both, they have both double bond to an oxygen, but an aldehyde has a hydrogen on one side, organic acid has the oxygen and hydrogen on the other side. So they're found at the terminal carbon which means an N carbon. So they're gonna be found located at the end of the chain. Hydrocarbon ending, so instead of it being like an alkane, alkene, it's gonna be like oic, then you add acid. So here's a part, oic and acid as the second word in the name. So what makes organic acids organic acids is that they generate hydrogen ions. Remember a charge. Hydrogen ions at the plus sign. I think she's got disconnected. Um, and in solution they also generate electrolytes. So an example of one, propanoic acid. So there's prop, and we know from probably memorizing and all the examples we do, prop is three. So there's three carbons. There. And there's no number, it's always at the end carbon. So there's not gonna be numbers involved with this, right? So there's gonna be no numbers in this part when you're talking about the carboxyl group because they're always found at the end. So I could either do it here at the beginning, but because of space, I'm just gonna do it here. So knowing that propanoic acid means three, now we get to attach to an OH here, just like up there. And the car this carbon is gonna be double bonded to an O. There you go, that's your propanoic acid. It could, you could have put the double bonded O here and then the OH here, but it's because they're always on at the end carbons. And let's not forget my hydrogens. Um, that's all you need. So carbon, because remember carbon, it's always carbon you need to worry about having four bonds. Everything else, not so much. And this carbon right here, where the part of the carboxyl group has the four bonds, one, two, three, four, and you're all set. The next one, there's only one carbon in the picture, right? So the one, the um, prefix for one is meth. Meth, and remember, if we're just talking about regular one carbon, it'd be called methane, like methane, 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 but you're getting rid of the E 
and it's called, you get rid of the E. So the directions say get rid of the E, that's why I'm backspacing, you replace it with oic. So methanoic, and then you add acid. And there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and clear these drawings and go down to esters. Esters, um, I'll zoom out a little. They contain the C double bond to an O and an O. So they're very similar to organic acid. This has a C double bond to O and an OH, while this is just a C double bond to an O on one side and an O on the other side, as opposed to this C double bond to O. So these four are probably where students get the most confused out of them. And actually there's another one. So that's why, but you don't have to memorize these because they're found in your reference table. That was a bad squiggly. All right? You don't have to memorize them because they have the example here, what it would look like, and an example of a name. All right, so esters contain the C double bonded to an O and then an O connecting the parent chain to a branch. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I think um, esters are a little bit tricky. They connect parent chains to a branch. So you have two, which means you have two parts, especially in the name. The hydrocarbon containing the C double bond to O is the parent chain. So when this, so this right here is the second name. So this is the second name. The hydrocarbon chain single bonded to oxygen is the branch. And it becomes at the beginning name, the first part, the first name. All right, so I'll give you an example. So we have ethyl butanoic. So let's try to remember what ethyl means. Ethyl means two, right? Going back to our reference table, Ethyl means two, so there's two carbons. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the two carbons. Okay, that's what ethyl means. And then butanoid is the second part, and that's telling you right there that that's what's gonna be connected to it. Actually, I like to draw them a little bit differently. Um, So it's connecting the ethyl group to the butanoic. So I'm gonna put an oxygen here. There's that CCO. Uh, and then this right here, butanoic, that's what has your double bond right here. That's the second name. Bute means four, so there's four carbons. So it's gonna look like this. Two, three, four. I should have made this smaller, but I don't know if this will make, nope, this won't let me make it smaller. So I'm gonna leave it right here. Um, I'll put it here, okay? So I know this is a little confusing. Ethyl means two, so that's where these two carbons come in place, because there's two carbons. And they're the first part of the name. Butanoic means that this is the part that has double bonded to an O. So right here we have the O. Well, here we have a C. That means that this right here is double bonded to an O. There you go. And then it has four. One, two, three, four. Four carbons. So that means here there's a hydrogen. Here there's a hydrogen, here there's a hydrogen, here there's a hydrogen. Don't worry about these. Carbon already has one, two, three, four bonds. So hydrogen goes here, 
here, here, here, here, here, and here. Go ahead and write that and I'll go over some examples. Why isn't there another hydrogen on the first carbon? There's only two carbon or hydrogens. Where? Here. Oh, sorry. I forgot that. That's why. Thank you. And I don't understand the oxygen that's in the middle of the chain when it's double bonded to the third, if you go left to right, or the fourth on the do you know what I mean? Why is there an oxygen in the main chain? Why couldn't you oh, just... that's part of it. If you look at it, fix? that's part of it right there. It's part oh, of it. Oh, okay. All right. I get it. You just yes. have to know that part. Sorry. Yeah, it's that's why I'm like, you don't have to memorize these. I know these are like really confusing, which is why there's a whole... I was looking for the key part too, so I yeah. just missed that part. Yeah, that's part of it. Good question though, because someone else might have not noticed that. All right, for the next one. Let's talk about it. So the longest chain is going to be the part is going to be that has this name right here. So see this right here. This is this is right here is one carbon. This right here is two carbons. Well, three carbons. Okay. So that means that this is actually going to be part of this. Knowing that one, two, three, three carbons. It connects things. The prefix for three is prop. It's going to end in, well, propen 08. There's that 08 part of the name. And let's talk about the other thing that it's attached to. It's attached to only one carbon. So, that, so that's called methyl. And that's methyl. So it's methyl propen 08. And the next one, propyl methanoate. So they're telling us that the part that has this whole thing is made up of one carbon. The part that has the O8. The O8 is this thing right here. That's the C, the old bonded to the O on one side and the oxygen on the other side. And that there's three carbons somewhere by itself. So let's go ahead and draw the propyl. So propyl means three. So that's C1, two, three. And then there's gonna be one, and that's gonna be attached to the car oxygen with a carbon L bonded to the O. So it's gonna look like this. So that's methylpropanoate or propyl methanoate. Uh, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, 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 here. So those are your esters. Your amines, they're all with an N. They're, that, an amine means there's a hydrogen. It's a nitrogen. So the N, the way I remember, means there's nitrogen involved. So there's N with hydrogens within the carbon chain. So they're inside of it. They're not in a branch. They're not at the end. Well, they can be found at the end. Um, if it's a branch off the parent chain, like a methyl branch, it's the number of the carbon with the amine group, name the parent chain, place the E at the end with the amine. You knew exactly as you would either accept substitute the word amine for ether. 
right? So let's do some examples. So one propanone, propanamine. If you look over here, this is what it looks like. So I'll do some examples. So I think the examples is the easiest. So prop means three, so there's gonna be three carbons. And the one, two, three. And an amine means that there's just a nitrogen somewhere in there. So N. You could, because it's one, you could have either just called it prop propanamine and that's it, or just prep propanate without the one. And, and the nitrogen can be found either here on the right side or here on the left side. NH and then a little two. There. There's a hydrogen here, 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 there's one here, here, here. The next one, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five carbons. The prefix for five is pent. We know there's an NH2 in the group, so it's pentanamine. And the location is, is at the second carbon. So if we did it this way from right to left, it'd be one, two, three, fourth carbon. But we're doing it from left to right, and it's one, two. We're always choosing it where you have the lowest number. Next one, ethyl methylamine. So let's go to this one. So it's a two part name again. So let's look at the ethyl part first. Ethyl has means two, it's a prefix for two. So C, C. Then you're going to have your N. And then off of that N, you have one carbon. So ethyl, two, there's two carbons. Then there's the N, which connects it. And meth means one, so there's one. Then you're gonna, have, I'm not gonna draw these hydrogens, but then you have a hydrogen here, here. There's already one here. Here, well, I'll draw them here, here, here. And remember, nitrogen, they told us, has two hydrogens. Um, okay. And you can write NH2 if you wanted to. I'll squeeze it in H2, like that. We're almost done, guys. So the next one on page 242, there's actually not really notes for it. Um, Organic acids that have both a carboxyl and an amine group. A part carboxyl group is the C. Uh, there it is. A carboxyl group is the C with a double bonded to an O. And an OH. C double bonded to an O. And an OH. And an amine group is just the NH2. Um, do you just have to know that something would be one or just recognizing it, but there's no like memorization with these. So I wouldn't worry about them too much. And I'm proud and I'm, they're not gonna be on your exam for me. All right, amides though will be. Um, there. All right, contains carbon double bond to an oxygen with an NH group, all right? So it's a combination. It can be at the terminal, meaning the N position, or in the middle somewhere. So examples of a terminal position look like this. Propanamide. Um, in your reference table, there's the amides. 
And so basically it can connect things. What I do. I think I exited out. Hold on, guys. What page are we on? 243. C dill bonded to O with an NH. So if prop is three, that means there's three carbons. So one two three and on your last carbon because it's it can be found at the end that's when you have this carbon double bonded to an o and you have the nh there you go because because there's no number affiliated you know it's going to be at the end so it doesn't matter if it was placed here or if it was placed here this has a hydrogen Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. For the next ones, butanamide. But means four, so there's four carbons. One, two, three, four. Right, it's the same thing. So that means at the fourth carbon, well, not the fourth carbon, either this carbon or this carbon, because there's no number affiliated with it, it can be here. Here's your double bond to an O, and here's your N and your H. I'm not gonna go ahead and draw the hydrogens here, but there's one here, 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 here. There's not a carbon here because this already has one, two, three, four bonds. Or sometimes they're gonna connect a parent chain to a branch. So methyl ethanamide, that means they're gonna have two parts. They're gonna have the methyl part, methyl, which means one carbon. One carbon, and then they, they will connect things. So this is where I think it might get a little confusing. So here's, the way they connect things, they have, they have this carbon, and they have the, this. Wait a minute. One, two. And this is where I'm gonna confuse you a little bit. Um, So your methyl is just one. So it's gonna look like this. This is the part that's just one right here. That's it, that's your methyl. I'm gonna draw it in a different color. So hopefully that'll help out. Uh, I'll draw it in this, in a blue. So that right there is the methyl part. Your ethanamide means there's two carbons. Knowing that, this is what it's gonna look like. So here's one carbon, then your NH group, then your other carbon. Oh, I should have done that in the other color. Here's so then there's your carbon, nitrogen, carbon. And this is the part that's double bonded to the O. This also has your hydrogen here. And then it has your hydrogen here, here, and here. And the blue part is what ethanamide means. I know, I think the last two we've talked about over are really confusing. So another one would be ethyl propanomine. So ethyl means two. 
So we're gonna have two carbons. So it's gonna look like this. One, two, there. There's your two carbons and that's where I drew this in place. Propanamide means three. So there's gonna be three carbons. So the way that does, what that does is, I'm gonna have my carbon here. That's gonna be double bonded to an oxygen and have the NH group. And then two, my second carbon, then my third carbon. And it's at this one right here, where I have my double bonded to an O with an NH, okay? That's what this part represents, propanamide. And don't forget you have a hydrogen here, 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 and here. And in this case, you have one here, 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 and here, okay? I know, amides and amines, I think, well, amides mostly are probably the more confusing ones, but esters are confusing the name, but amides are confusing to name and draw, which is why we'll do more practice. All right, that's it for today. Um, unless anybody has any questions, your homework for tonight. I do wanna go over the homework. If you look at your notebook, I want you guys to go to page 228. I don't know. Two twenty eight looks like this. Like this and like this. Your homework over the weekend was to do this, was to identify the class of compounds for right here. So for each one right here, you had to identify this as a ketone, as an alcohol, as a halide, as an ester, as an organic acid, as in another alcohol here, as in um, an organic acid here, as an amide, as an alcohol here, and these three on the next page. You had to identify them as an aldehyde, as a halide, and as a ketone. Hint, hint, just gave you guys the answers. So that was your homework over the weekend was to identify, use your um, chemistry reference table, that large table that has all the um, functional groups and identify the class of compound. Your homework tonight, due Wednesday, is to now name them. These ones here and the first three here. So for instance, the first one, which is what I went over last week. Let me pull up the reference table because you guys do have this in your notebook, in table R of your chemistry reference table. And if you don't have a physical copy in front of it, you can just Google it, which is what I do to pull up the screen. So the first one, I'll do the whole thing for you because that's what we did last class. So there's the main thing that's not a carbon or a hydrogen, remember? I said that the main thing you gotta look for is try to find what's something that's not just a carbon and a hydrogen. So in this case, we have a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen with a carbon on both sides, right? So looking at your reference table, carbon double bond to an oxygen with carbons on both sides. So we know it's not gonna be an aldehyde because it has a hydrogen on one side. We know it's not gonna be an organic acid because it doesn't have an OH somewhere. We know it's not gonna be an ester because it doesn't have an O somewhere but it could be a key, it's gonna be a ketone. That's what we're left with because it's a carbon double bond to an oxygen, just like that. So you should have had this part down as ketone. And then you had to name it. Well, there's one, two, three. There's three carbons. So we know it's gonna start with prop. 
looking back at the fun at the notes on function or you don't even have to look back at your notes look at the ketones you have to identify where that um, double bond is located okay so ketone see they have numbers identify where that double bond is located so it would be at the second carbon one two three or one two three and ketones end in the words anone so pentanone Pantanone, or we're doing propanone. Prop anone. And it's at the second carbon. So two propanone. There's your answer. All right. So if you want to confirm your answers that you got for the class of compound um, at the end of this video or when I I'll post it up on Google Classroom after. Go ahead and since you've already listened to class, go ahead and forward it. And I, when I was going over this worksheet, I literally gave you the answer for what kind of compound this is. This one is, this one is, this one is, this one, this one, this one, all of these. I literally listed off what functional group they are. Knowing what functional group they are, that it should be able to help you with naming them. Okay, so please watch this video. All right then, and that's it for today, guys, unless anybody has any questions. All right, well then have a good day.